we're gonna be gluing our material for our super browns and our super goats. So we're gonna take this big old piece of cowhide. It's called aniline. It's really nice, high quality, soft leather. And we'll try to find a good, good section of it that we can cut out to match to our soling material. Okay. So this is our super brown, and then right over here we have our super goat material. So when you're saying matching, what it, what do you have to match? So I gotta lay this big old sheet out and try to find a portion of it that will fit to this sheet, um, and hope that uh, we find like a good section of leather. The leather is kind of unpredictable sometimes. You can't always get really even grain, smooth leather. Sometimes it's a little bit more wrinkly or it's got holes and, and, and things like that. We don't want that. So we try to pick the highest quality section and, and glue that and use that for the sandals. All right, let's cool. see how big this hide is. Quite large. So this is a full hide? Yeah. Is it a full hide? Oh my goodness. So this is a full cow? Yeah. It's pretty crazy. It's a German cow and it's huge. Yes, very large. And it's like really soft, very supple leather. It's great for your feet, very comfortable. Where's that? Oh, oh here it is. This, move this up a little bit. I don't normally do this, so. I'm gonna rusty that right there looks like a great spot right so if you look here this little like nick right there who knows what that could be from I, I don't know um, we try to avoid things like that and you know sometimes we can't you know we just have to live with it but we'll try our best to punch around it when we actually punch out the sandal itself so that people aren't getting a sandal with that right on it so but this looks like a pretty good portion of the leather so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this awesome with that and obviously we want to try to be um, as mindful of like the leftovers, right? We don't want to waste the leather because this is... What do we do with the extra pieces? We take the extra pieces and we will um, stamp them out to the template of the sandal and then we'll glue like an individual sandal um, and then stamp out of that. So we're not wasting the little scraps of leather that we're left with. Cause this isn't just a rectangular piece of leather. It's, it comes from a cow, right? So it's got like, you know, it's it's not uniform. It's not rectangular. Too so. bad they couldn't make a square cow, right? I wish they could It'd be easy for us. We can't, so cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. All right, do your thing. Boom. Nice, Very nice. nice work, man. And any portions that have like wrinkles, we stretch it out to make sure that the leather is nice and smooth and taut. Nice. So we've got our um, brown aniline leather glued on our sole material now. So we're going to go ahead and make some super goats. I already have my right sandal and I'm going to um, punch the left sandal. So let's fire this machine up. Um, Guys over here. Uh, left hand. No, right hand. Mm -hmm. so what's next? Next, I'll go ahead and brand them. Brander over here. Okay, nice. So we have three sizes. Very nice. Okay. Um, now, um, one thing we have to do is because the super goats, or the goats are thicker, we actually have to um, route out a little slot, or cut out a little slot right here to where 
the insole post, the leather piece that wraps around so it's not protruding off of that sole. It'll make a little bit more sense when I actually do it. What do you call that process? We call it shearing. Right? Like shearing a sheep? But like shearing a sheep. Or a really shaggy goat. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Wear eye protection because protection is always important. Have you ever got hit in the eye? <laughs> I've definitely had pieces of rubber flying in my eye, yes. For some reason it happens to me more than it does anyone else in this workshop. I've got this little, what do you call this thing? Roto zip. Um, it spins really fast and it cuts into things really easily. So. Also part of the shearing process, we have to cut off that little piece. This is where the shearing actually happens. Right? Yes, exactly. So now you can see, um, once you take the insole post and you put it into the slot and you wrap it around here, it's gonna be kind of in that groove as opposed to sticking out, just so it preserves the life of the insole post um, when you're wearing them, so. Yeah, this, this part's really, really important. So, when we say handmade, is that a serious thing? Yes. <laughs> Very serious. Yes, there's much toil that goes into the production of these sandals. So next, um, I'm gonna go ahead and countersink the slot where the toe plug attached to the heel strap's gonna go through. Um, that way that toe plug's not, just like that, it's not protruding about the sole of it. Yeah, so I'll make a little slot. Um, I always wear these glasses and somehow things will still fly into my eye even when I'm wearing them. Anyway, we're good now, so here we go. Sweet. So now that's just deep enough to where that toe plug is gonna sit in there nice and flush. What's like the big difference between like making our elite lacing system or making super browns and super goats? Because uh, the supers are made with all leather, there's a lot more um, involvement on our part as far as selecting um, like the best and highest quality leather that we can, we can basically find. So we try to do our best when we pick the right leather. Uh, well, make sure it's nice and matched. And Isn't all the leather the same? And not always, <laughs> no. The leather is not always the same because it comes off an animal and um, you can't expect it to be like a stark blank piece of paper, right? There's always gonna be just like weird textures and sometimes even holes in the leather or different patterns. And um, I assure you guys, we try our best as far as picking the best thing that we can. You know, the leather's unpredictable. It, it always is going to be, you know, so. Yeah, um, so it's about selection. Yeah. Okay, well show us, show us the process. Cool, so because I sheared those slots, we have to punch out um, the insole post for those now out of the leather. Um, and then also we need to cut our straps. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that material for those things. kind of show you like there's sometimes there's these grain like there's grain or creases and such like that and, and holes and other weird things that happen all right so it looks like we have a good piece up here in the corner that's unused so i'm gonna grab a guy for our insole post and i'm gonna punch one of each side just try to use that got one now i gotta flip it over not sure if I can. Maybe not. Oh, did you find it? Yes, I did. So. Boom. Beautiful. That's amazing. Great work. Try not to be a wasteful. There's two pieces right there. 
now that we have our soles and our insole post, we need to gather the rest of our components for our sandals. So uh, we need to grab our um, heel straps. Uh, now this is five and a half ounce oil tan. It's the same stuff that the dogs are made out of, uh, but they're just cut into 11 sixteenths of an inch um, wide straps. And it's, um, is it the same strapping material as the um, super brown or all browns? Um, it is the same, yeah. So it's the same as the um, the straps that you would get on the classics, but um, but this shorter. is much shorter, yeah. And then um, the classic is a totally different lacing system. So um, yeah, so we try to find some good pieces. Um, oh, look, that's a really good one. This leather is pretty awesome because it's got a little bit of stretch to it. Um, which you want, it's gonna just kind of break in really good with your with your foot, um, and they feel amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them to the length um, that are needed for this sandal. This pair we're making is a size eight, so I'm referring to my chart right here. Two nine and five eighths, which is right there. Okay, cut my second strap. right there. These can go back in the bin. We'll use them for future supers. Uh, my straps right there. Now we got to cut the hook and loop, um, which I'm also going to refer to this chart for. Let's see. So for our heel strap, we're going to need five and a half inch loop. So I'm going to cut two pieces of that. Okay. And then we'll also need three and three eighths for hook. Throw these in here, and then we're gonna need our hook and loop for our insole, which is a thinner hook and loop. It's five eighths instead of three quarters. So for a loop, I'm gonna need three and three eighths of an inch. Chop your fingers off, obviously. That sucks really bad. Size eight is small power strap. Yep. So I'm gonna need to cut six and a quarter. Okay, there's the hook for that. So now we have all our hook and loop. Sweet. Now we can start sewing everything together and we'll start to see these amazing sandals come together. Now we're gonna go ahead and take all the pieces of hook and loop um, and the leather that we cut and we're gonna sew them together to make the straps and the insoles for our sandal. Um, so I have my heel straps here. I've got the hook and the loop and we have this um, brown aniline leather that's cut into strips, um, the same width as the hook and loop, and it's the same leather that's actually on the footbed of the sandal, um, and it's from Germany. It's really good stuff. So I'm gonna try to pick a good piece of leather here. Um, it's a nice piece. What size is supposed to be with what size? Yeah, this looks like a really good piece. Um, and then a not so good piece would probably be something like, let's see if I can find one. Um, Ooh, there's one right there, maybe. The yeah, sometimes floor. when things are really like wrinkly like that, um, it's, it's kind of a sign that the leather's really, like see how it's stretching like that? That's not so good. Um, it's really weak and we don't want that. I start by tacking on my loop. So quick little tack. Do the same with this one. The loop is tacked on now. So I'm just gonna take my anilin and I'm gonna sandwich the end of this strap so it's the loop on the outside and then this strap on the other side.
Okay, so now I can cut that. And cut the corners. Like so. Yeah, let's see up close. That's the best thing about these tractors, they really smooth they go in. So yeah. Nice, nice work, man. And so why do you why is it doubled up there? So it's doubled up because the when the hook and loop are joined together, we want to give that joint some like structural integrity. So if you just have one stitch going across, then it's likely going to be able to be, get pulled apart because um, it's weak where that joint is. Yeah, the joint, yeah. So we try to double over itself um, three times, and then that gives it some strength. So it doesn't. Like it won't is that thread pretty strong? strong? Thread's really strong. What kind is it? Number 69, bonded nylon. Yeah. Where else do they use that stuff? And so up here any any sporting bands. equipment? Like, yeah. So it, and it's all military so spec. It's good stuff. So our bobbin just ran out, so we just replaced it. Now I gotta do a little tack over where I ended off. So usually what I do. And I come back. that bobbin did not run out all right so what's next TK okay so next we got to do our insole posts um, or otherwise known as dogs we call them dogs because I guess I don't think they look like dogs I mean I guess they do a little bit this insole post needs um, these buckles I'm gonna go ahead and tack those on first and then We'll go from there. Just a quick tack, like so. Same with this one. Okay, then I'm gonna do the same thing like I do with the straps. I'm gonna tack on my loop first. On the heel straps, we use three quarter inch um, aniline. Now we're gonna use five eighths of, of an inch aniline because the insole posts are smaller straps. So I've got these center pieces right here. This looks like a really good one right here. Yeah. Some nice leather. Cut. My scissors are really dull right now. Sharpen those later. Okay, so same thing as the heel straps. I'm gonna in the end so it looks a little better okay now the second one I wonder if there's any like people out there that are sewers or seamstresses or seamsters, seamsters? and they're like watching my technique and just I guess judging me <laughs> or they're just impressed maybe they're I'm impressed TK 
These ones do cause struggle, yeah. They do. It's just a more um, involved, like, lengthy process to make these than anything else. Yeah. Because we're, like, hand picking everything. We're. Um, there's a lot more sewing that goes into it. Uh, and, like, yeah, it's just a. The sandal itself and the materials are a little bit more expensive, so we try to take. Well, we take more care when we're dealing with it. Um, so, it's worth it. If we're making our customers happy. That's right. Okay, we got dogs. Sweet. People would ask, like, oh, what are those sandals that so and so is wearing in what video or whatever? Or, um, I think we even did a video where I talked about them. Oh, sorry. I and sorry. yeah, we've just been getting a lot of inquiries about them. And why and were we wearing them? Because they're the best. They are. Yeah, they're just really comfortable. And they have a little bit of stretch to them, huh? Yes. Which yes. is actually pretty good. Yeah, a lot of stretch, and they just, when they break in, it just feels right. It's like a glove. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, Grip Top is great, you know? And, like, what, goat skin is what we use, right? Like, yeah. all that's great, too. But, like, something about having the entire sandal made out of leather is really cool. Uh, so now I'm going to make some power straps for these guys, too. sewed and put together now we have to um, actually assemble the sandal itself um you need some buckles need to brand the straps also okay is it ready to brand yeah i'll go ahead and brand them right now actually okay that one came out crisper okay one second let me things focus focus there we go much more focused. Sweet. All right. So, throw some buckles on these guys. Okay. I'm gonna pull the toe plugs through. So, see how it's sitting nice and flush now from that. Countersink I did it earlier. Yeah. Nice. I'm a pro countersinker. It's a lot of little steps to this thing, huh? Sure are. That's why it's my favorite <laughs> sandal to make out of all the sandals. It's always at the end of the day too. Because we do everything else. Yes. <laughs> then it's a mad scramble to make the most complicated ones. Yeah. Love it. Now, got to tape the straps on to the sandals, or sorry, sorry, no, the toe plugs onto the straps. Um, and then we'll go ahead and um, box X them on our box X sewing machine. Okay, so yeah, I got my little connector, the tape thing. The tape just holds it in place so that the sewing is a lot easier. Just fold it over, and that's gonna. We're gonna sew a little box onto that. Nice. <laughs> this is the box X. Tell us about this machine, TK. Oh, it's old. It's ancient. How old? I don't know. How old is it? 1938. It's 1938. It's really old. Pre World War II. And it works like a. Like you'd expect like you'd expect but it's served us well it's served us quite well so if you there's a little box right here probably shouldn't put my finger in there no, go ahead um but the box x is like a very specific um pattern that's sewn and you'll see it like a lot on like like backpacks and 
other other types of like I don't know bags and purses and like military stuff. Like the box X is just a really foolproof way of connecting two pieces together. Um, so yeah, it doesn't yeah. ever come out. So anyways, you just set it in that box. One second. Okay, go ahead. Do your thing. And I'm gonna center it just a little bit. I let it rip. That's all like awesome. it just it's like programmed into the mechanically somehow into this old machine. Right here. It's pretty incredible how it the works. The cam. Yes. And it shows this box. Like so. Yeah, let me get in real close there. One second. Yeah, man. It's a nice little stitch. Now we're gonna go ahead and sew the insole post or the dog. And uh, and then we'll be ready to lace our sandals and then ship them out to you guys. Okay. So, go ahead and sew these. I'm gonna use this sewing machine. This sewing machine is a little more heavy duty. Um, and when you fold these, this piece of leather together and sew it, it's really thick. So that machine isn't really capable of sewing through that much material, but this one is. So what we do is we fold that like so. And I'm gonna sew around. That's really nice work, man. Guess we'll do the second one. I'm gonna go up to this other side here so we can get a better angle on it. Now we're good there. Cool. One more step. One more step. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, lace these. So um, that's basically, we call it final lacing. It's the process where we um, final kind of lace. Final lace, yeah. We set it up to where like it's easy for you. As soon as you get it out of the package, you can slip it under your foot and you won't mess up the lacing in any way. So let's see, we slide the buckle up. And rotate the dock so it's pointed up. Pull the strap through like so. Run that through from the side. And the heel strap on. Boom. So then when you get it, you're like, oh my gosh, I wonder how to put this on. Oh, maybe I just like undo the heel strap and then like. I slip my foot on and then I, yeah, it's super easy. So, and then goes through here. Sweet. And super goats. Look at that. And their power straps. Power straps. Look at these, man. Nice work. TK, these were just like lumps of stuff a little while ago now they look awesome nice work thank you piece of cake huh? buy them oh yeah so easy made it too it's easy it's not a it's not a uh, difficult process in any way <laughs> um, but yeah they're really rad sandals i think you guys will like them if you order them sweet it's power straps awesome good work tk thanks found it Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel for more weekly content. And make sure to click the bell so that you'll be notified every time we post something new.